Greetings, friends. It's Monday, March 6th. We've got Chapo coming at you. It's me, Matt and Felix, as usual. But joining us are two gentlemen, the first of which is returning champion, Brandon Wardell. Hi, what's up? But joining us, joining us for the first time is Jamel Johnson. Hi. Together, Brandon and Jamel are the Brandon and Jamel Show. Gentlemen, welcome to Chapo Trap House. This is Monday. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, thank you for having us. Much appreciated. Uh, I, I love you. And I, I, uh, I, I do want to say, uh, I want to say thank you to the 2022 Girl God episode for dethroning my 2016 episode as uh, <laughs> the, the most uh, hated episode of Chapo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Brandon. Uh, there's still time. You, I mean, you could dethrone them again. Well, a lot episode. of a lot of time. Keep yeah. it up, buddy. Keep a it up. Lot, well, hey, passed, you don't. You know? Hey, Brandon. Brandon, you don't have to. Brandon, you don't have to if you don't want to. I'll tell you that. <laughs> we. Uh, I mean, we have 59 minutes to go of just mind-numbingly awful content we could put out right now. Uh, this, no, this is gonna. I, I promise you, know, this this will be good. Well, people do like bad shit, so maybe. Yeah, hey, fuck it up. Somebody's hearing this, they go, "Oh, I didn't like, I didn't All like right. that guy when he was twenty three. I'm thirty yeah. now." <laughs> Brandon, uh, Brandon, challenge accepted. Okay. Well, uh, gentlemen, I, I think I'd like to begin today with um, a few news stories that I neglected to get to last week, but are, are still of, I think, vital importance. Uh, beginning with. Sending our heartfelt congratulations to our good friend Steven Seagal for being awarded the official Order of Friendship by the nation of Russia and Vladimir Putin. It's you know it's like he spent his whole career spreading friendship, and I'm glad uh, Russia has finally uh, recognized his work in the field of humanitarianism. The award, uh, yes, the uh, the Seagal was presented this award by uh, a half dozen Aikido sparring partners who all collapsed simultaneously as they attempted to hand the martial arts expert his friendship trophy while he sat in a swivel office chair. Hell yeah. He's aligned himself and he likes to be photographed with President Putin. Um, he went with a Russian delegation to Venezuela uh, about a month ago and presented uh, President Nicolas Maduro with a samurai sword. Was, uh, you, so what do, you, what do we think here? It's Steven Seagal, he's been such a friend to Russia, but... Maybe not a good enough friend to America. I, I mean, do we, like I know we're in a sort of a, a, a new Cold War with Russia. Do you think that we need to give our own medal of friendship to actor Steven Seagal? I like how Steven Seagal like worked his way up <coughs> into being a Russia guy by starting with Serbia. Like, do, do you remember how he he started by like training Serbian special forces in like you know slapping people on the wrist? And, uh, you know, like tripping people by their shoelaces. And then finally, after like five years of that, he finally got up to the big dog. He finally got up to Russia. It's like the like the double A, like a double A, like minor league baseball team. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's like the people who play the uh, NFL Europe League. But I mean, I guess we should just let him keep rocking because like then Russia will just be slapping people on the wrist. It, you know what I mean? Like I like that. I like the idea of Russia having terrible fighting tactics. I mean, yeah, it's it seems it does seem like he's commanding their war in Ukraine. It, it's it's like it's not like they're doing great now. They're at a, at a complete stalemate with a country that like every time that we sell them guns, they sell gun, those same guns to the Romanian mafia. <laughs> I uh, I, the, uh, I do have a Steven Seagal uh, tidbit, uh, an exclusive oh, please, tidbit yes. that I that I heard from. Uh, you met him at Jash. <laughs> no, it was uh, my my uh, on screen aunt Tia Carrere used to uh, work with him back in the back in the day. She worked with him on a movie where uh, she revealed that uh, he he didn't know any of the lines, so he'd have everybody film their parts ahead of time. And then he would show up like six hours later and have like a uh, have a bikini girl hold uh, all of his lines on cue cards. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like so it's like like Vanna White would just like bring out his line, which is just like, 
I, I don't know, like, yeah, like, uh, he hasn't studied any of his lines, and then he just needs a cue card to say, if you take, if you squeeze that trigger, I'll send you straight to hell, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, he has, had to he has be some in a bikini too. year old lady in a, in a bikini holding, holding these lines. Okay, hold on a second. I feel, I feel like you've glossed over the most important tidbit in your, in your little uh, dish here, Brandon, is that, that Tia Carrero was your aunt on screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she would, oh, I hello. wish she was my aunt in real <laughs> <Hello>. life. Hello. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Ooh. <laughs> Just real quick here. It says, the, seven, the 70-year-old martial artist was given the order of friendship for his major contribution to the development of international culture and humanitarian cooperation. The order, which recognizes people Russia considered to have improved international relations, also mentions Segal's work since 2018 as a special representative of Russia's foreign ministry for humanitarian ties with the United States and Japan. The Under Siege Star backed Russia's illegal annexation of Ukraine's Crimea region in 2014, calling it very reasonable and has supported its invasion of Ukraine. In 2021, Segal joined a pro-Kremlin party, and last August, he visited the eastern Ukraine August. region of Dontex, uh, sorry, Dontesk, including the destroyed detention center where dozens of Ukrainian prisoners of war were reportedly killed during an attack. Um, he also made a documentary about this. So, I mean, uh, will, will Oscar rec recognize his work in this field? Probably not. The term humanitarian cooperation, it's so loose. It's like when they say, like, handmade sandwich. It's like you just... You're just fine with people being alive, and I guess that's humanitarian cooperation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess so. so I mean, is it? It's too late for him to get a, get one of our one of our medals, I guess. Well, that's well, what we we gotta give him one. Right? Was, we, yeah. we just gotta get him like an uh, like an A twenty four play, like an A twenty four move. Get it, get him a, get him in an A twenty four movie, and then we're we're back. Uh, Dude, I, I do a whole movie about hardball. the cue cards. I think we need to exactly. play hardball. I think we need to send him like a, some nice beads or whatever, but they're coated in ricin and then just assassinate <laughs> his ass and let the other washed up action stars know what we mean business. And we're not going to have these motherfuckers turn in fucking coat on us just so they can get a lower tax rate and like a percentage on a Moldovan silver mine. Fuck you. If, this is America. If they, just, uh, if they just put them in the expendables, none of this show would have happened. That's real. <laughs> that is true. That's actually real as fuck. But this yeah. is good. Kill him, and that's a warning to the other expendables not to get too cute. <laughs> 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 uh, um, and you know Mickey Rourke was maybe sitting on the fence about getting getting friendly with uh, the Z Russian nationalist movement, but we made an example exactly. of Chagall, and he's he's back he's back under the big tent of America. <laughs> uh, second, um, a news story of note uh, from last week that I neglected to mention is there are uh, there are elves in Mexico. There are Mexican elves. And this is not just me saying it. It's the president of Mexico. Uh, this uh, is from the AP. Mexican president posts photo of what he claims is an elf. <laughs> Mexico's president mm -hmm. posted a photo on his social media account <laughs> Saturday showing what he said appeared to be a mythological woodland spirit similar to an elf. President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador did not seem to be joking when he posted a, fic a photo of an alux, a, a mischievous woodland spirit in Mayan folklore. Lopez Obrador wrote the photo was taken three days ago by an engineer. It appears to be an Alux, he said. Everything is mystical. I mean, I saw that picture, and I don't know what the hell else it is. It sure shit looks yeah, can like we, Can we see that photo? Yeah. yeah is it wearing we some of those Andy? sick boots with the big toes, the, big, <laughs> the curly toes? <laughs> All right, we're we're going to uh, – producer Chris is uh, – we're going we're gonna to bring up the photo of the Mexican elf. Unfortunately, he's not wearing uh, one of the the incredibly cool cowboy, the cowboy boots. boots. Like they're Fuck. really – Sort of like big, <laughs> spindly, is, like long uh, toes. Yeah. This is not like I would really not say this is like a Western style of elf. I no, mean, you're not. about to see. Yeah, like look. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, is it a is it like, a damn tree? Yeah, it's got he's got like a hood on. I mean, that's elf behavior. That's elfy. Yeah, it's, yeah that's, it's elf. that's where they make cookie. <laughs> <laughs> they make cookie in there. <laughs> Not all elves make cookies, Brandon. How many times I got to tell you? Oh, elves fuck. contain multitudes. Brandon, you're getting us in trouble by uh, stereotyping elves again. This goes to show, though, just how we need to support AMLO in all things because 
uh, our our leaders are making orcs, and he's over there documenting elves. Yeah, he's clearly the good guy. Well, the yeah, I mean, oh, oh fuck! No! Here go. Oh, here he goes. Ah! Ah! No! This fool look like a Resident Evil villain. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> that's scary. That's too scary. Once again, elves. It ain't all sweet. It ain't <laughs> shit sweet with these elves. Oh, hell no. no, this is too scary, guys. Fuck. <laughs> what? Am Amlo is like being being like a Mexican Amlo fan. It has to be like living the wildest dreams of like a Bernie or Corbin supporter. Like he just, every week he just issues a new referendum that has like fourteen percent turnout, where he's like. Should I be president for life that gets like 96%? He's like the greatest. I know there are a lot of criticisms of him, but I I think he's perfect. And also ahead of the curve. We've talked about this a lot about how Zoomers now all believe in like they, they, they have the basic average beliefs of like the protagonists of the movie The Witch. Um <laughs> AMLO believes the same thing as the average TikTok Zoomer. I, I do like his uh, ending coda on this, too. Everything is mystical. Everything is mystical. It's true. Remember that TikToker who was murdered for finding a giant? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, just a, a slight correction on that, on, on uh, uh, his coda to the Mexican elf thing. He was referring to the currently incarcerated rapper Mystical. Not the oh, elves. That, he said well, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just a, a little bit more, a little bit more on the uh, the Mexican elf here. It says uh, the nighttime photo shows a tree with a branch forming what looks like a halo of hair and what might be stars forming the figure's eyes. I mean, well, this is like this is the like the AP injecting their skepticism into the Mexican elf thing, which I think is uh, unwarranted. Yeah, that's uh, excuse me, that's editorializing. Get out of here. <laughs> Are you guys reporters or are you commentators? Yeah. <laughs> are you elves or not? Lopez Obrador has expressed reverence for indigenous cultures and beliefs. Engineers and our workers are in the Yucatan Peninsula constructing a tourist train that is the president's, president's pet project. According to traditional Mayan belief, aluxes are small mischievous creatures that inhabit forests and fields and are prone to playing tricks on people, like hiding things. Some people leave small offerings to appease them. Oh, his pet project? He's going to make it? He's gonna make them his pets. <laughs> well, no, I mean, he's. I think he's building. He's building oh, a tourist no. train to the uh, the the elf uh, region of Mexico. I mean, well, that's, that's. I mean, I know tourism was a big industry in Mexico, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe this could become a problem if they start stealing things. But I mean, I guess <coughs> the article does says they can be appeased by just giving them like. Well, things. slow down, slow down with that rhetoric, Will. <laughs> You're the, one, you're the one who said they were making fucking cookies, Brandon. No, I know, I know. I started it. I started it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, the, the elf well, train's off the rails. Well, the, I mean, that that's kind of like um, the two stereotypes or crimes uh, that uh, you're warned about with Mexican tourism. Uh, you're actually kidnapped by the Mexican elves <laughs> and forced to make cookies. You're forced to work mm. in the Mexican Keebler factory. <laughs> My mom used to say that all the time, man. You're, you're forced to make spicy candy. Well, yeah, you're you're forced to make like yeah the that mango candy that has a bunch of like chili powder on it. I guess that's what their Keebler elves make. I mean, that's pretty live. I'm planning a trip right now. I'm going to Tulum <laughs> and then I'm going to Elfland. <laughs> I'm gonna just uh, rock with them. I gotta say, I uh, the the aluxes, uh, I mean, like the sort of the glowing eyes in a tree, playing tricks on people. Uh, this appeals to me more than the like, shall we say, the stereotypical European elves of the J A R R Tolkien uh, variety. Yeah. Uh, because you know, like, uh, what 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 do they do? They, it just seems like they like listen to Enya all day long. No, and, yeah. Um, well, your European elves, um, their entire thing is like that they live forever and that they're good with money. Yeah. There's, they're, I, there's, they're, they're like, they're like, they're like, <laughs> like, like they're like, if, like Jewish people are handsome. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of European elf revisionism, you know, they, they yeah. were, they were, they weren't all, they weren't all European. Come on, son. Everybody forget, man. Everybody wants to act. Yeah. yeah. European elves started the slave trade. <laughs> 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 that's a fact dutch elves <laughs> I was, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm, I'm a black israelite but for elves <laughs> <laughs> dr dr yakub created mithril in uh, yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> 
Look, I just I just needed Jamel to laugh at that. I don't, I don't care about <laughs> you. Got me. It did work. You got me. You got one. You got me ready. <laughs> Moving on from some encouraging news about elves, uh, I've got, unfortunately, uh, gentlemen, a very bad news about all of our penises. So uh, before I get to this story, can we all just check real quick? How's it going down there? Okay, still attached. That's good, but don't get used to it because the CEO of Daily Clout and the director of Daily Clout War Room shares this horrifying research. The latest info relating to male fertility and sexual function shows that men who receive the mRNA shots are essentially infertile and their penises are rotting off. Oh, man. Oh, oh uh, Lord. Can we just uh, play with it? Here's a little clip of the Daily Cloud CEO talking about how all our dicks are going to fall off. As a follow up to the report I did on the COVID vaccine harms to sperm and testes. I also wanted to talk with you about harms to the penis and its functions. I did some research on this and it's very disturbing. One thing that comes up in the results of adverse events related to the penis is um, just general penis injury. It doesn't say more than that. But the other thing that penis goes injury. into are quite concerning. One thing it mentions is penile vein thrombosis, and thrombosis is a blood clot. So, of course, that is always a bad thing to have going on anywhere in your body. It <laughs> seems particularly concerning in that area. Oh, yeah. It's quite rare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I, I just want to be clear here. Uh, uh, on this, this was shared on Twitter, and they have appended it with a big notice saying, this claim is false. Which is how you know it's a hundred percent true. Why would they? Why would they have to tell you this is I hope, false? I hope this is talks. true. <laughs> I want my. I, I've been I would love, yeah, you. Yeah, you've been talking yeah, about this, you. Jamel. You yeah. know, I've been trying to get my dick cut off for years, man. There's a lot of paperwork involved. And <laughs> if I could just skip to the front of the line, I love that. What did they say? A thromb stromboli? I'm gonna get a penis stromboli. <laughs> we could get so much more done. I swear to God. I just it, I like this one because it's like. Four billion people got the COVID vaccine, and then that, that just like so, just like half of it. Two billion people just done, just dicks <laughs> completely disintegrated, just done. No more children of men. <laughs> and also, that lady talking looked like she was she she came from a rotten penis. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, disturbing to say the least, but okay. But we're not done with cock news because I've got I got another yeah. story. Ooh. This is courtesy of the, uh, yeah. the New York Post. <laughs> Average penis length has grown in 30 years, but doctors call it concerning. What? Why? What? It's concerning. Why? Are they? Do they have to suck all of them or something? Do they? They don't think they can fit it in their mouth or what? What's going on here? Well, thank no, you. Well, thank say, you, microplastics. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. It says here the average penis length has increased over the past 30 years, a new study has revealed, but experts warn it might not be the ideal reality every man's dreamed of. As it turns out, size does matter. Researchers fear the phallic inflation is due to unhealthy habits like binging junk food or being mostly sedentary or even pollution. So, I mean, like, uh, so you're telling me my, I, I could get a bigger dick by um, just breathing air pollution, uh, lying on my ass and, and not doing Ooh. shit generally? It sounds like a pretty And good going deal. to Burger King? Great. <laughs> <laughs> I was I already know, going. Like, <laughs> uh, is it just like they're getting longer? Is uh, it really, does it specify girth. whether or not they're sacrificing girth? Because like a really long, narrow dick isn't ideal. <laughs> like a reverse, like a reverse chode. <laughs> yeah, I, I would rather have uh, the girth than the length, honestly. Uh, like a, a stretch Armstrong. Uh, published in the World Journal of Men's Health, the Stanford University study analyzed data from 75 studies with, with over 55,000 men from 1992 to 2021, focusing on the length of an erect penis. Researchers, dis researchers discovered that the average penis size has grown in a staggering 24% over nearly three decades. Erect penile length is getting longer, from an average of 4.8 inches to 6 inches over the past 29 years, Eisenberg said. It was 4.8 inches? In the 90s? 
the Holy good old days. shit. How did anyone get anything done? <laughs> also, how are That's they... That's where grunge came from. How are they measuring? Is it is it self-reported data? <laughs> a great question. <laughs> it's, it's a bunch of guys uh, measuring from their asshole. <laughs> <laughs> It says here, while more studies are needed to confirm the findings and, if confirmed, determine the cause of the changes, the researcher, researchers' conclusions are hard for experts to swallow. Gee, I'll say. Uh, New York Post is having a little <laughs> fun there. I like that they say more, st- more research oh, is needed. So, fellas, uh, keep, keep submitting. Keep submitting data on, on this issue. This, the scientists need uh, further study on this issue. That's a great. Uh, you, can, um, you can send in your um, data to the Brandon Jamel show on Beat 'em Off Wednesdays. Oh yeah, every Wednesday. Every Wednesday is Beat 'em Off Wednesdays. Beat 'em Off Wednesday. So we'll just add that. We'll just do. We'll put out a little tent. Call in, yeah. Where you can yeah, hand you in your pray. papers, yeah. So you guys are doing sort of a, a chatterbait thing on the on the pod. Chatterbait morning, yeah, a little morning bit of that. Zoo, chatterbait, you know. But it's also because you know health is important. So when we get the dick data. We're going to hand it to New York Post, and then we're going to get it all figured out. But it might, it, yeah, it might fall off. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, these are, uh, these are two these two stories, like, leave me with, it, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know in your mouth? Yeah. Oh, hell no. <laughs> hey, pause, man. Hey, come on, man. I didn't think it was that kind of show. All right, I got a... <laughs> I got one more uh, video clip to share with you guys. Uh, over the weekend, uh, there were, uh, CPAC happened. Uh, somehow we didn't get the invite, the Conservative Political Action Conference. Um, it, it was, you know, uh, not much worth uh, discussing from what happened at CPAC over the weekend. It's the usual carnival of horrors and grotesqueries. But, you know, everyone's talking about Trump and Marjorie Hillary Green. But for me, there was one breakout star of this weekend at CPAC. And it is the gentleman who is Lauren Boebert's personal stylist and fashion designer responsible for her Let's Go Brandon dress. Chris, can we hear from Lauren Boebert's fashion, fashionista? Fashion, Andre Soriano. I love planet Earth, and you can only do that in, in America. I love you all. <laughs> Keep doing what you want. I, you know, there's no other place than planet Earth that you can do who you are as a person and do it. I love you all. And I love you. Yeah. And I'm... <laughs> oh, all right. Oh. I'm not straight. Uh, okay. I... I know, you know, you know, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. No, no. You, you can't kiss the cameraman. All right. See you later. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. So that is I will, I what will... is allowed at CPAC, <laughs> but they banned Nick Fuentes. So I heard there's a Trump rat upstairs. Let's go check that out. I will <laughs> I, I will kill myself if that man is not Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most Brazilian man I have ever seen. <laughs> Also, Lauren Bopper did <laughs> did wear her Let's Go Brandon dress before. I've seen it before. She wore it in 2021. Remember? Well, I mean, I guess this guy has been has been on her squad for a yeah. while now. Yeah, I mean, I I on a on a very personal level was hoping that they'd be done with it by now. But yeah, they're still going strong. Let's go, Brandon is still going very strong. Every time I see Matt Chrisman in real life, he yells it. He yells it very close. <laughs> Yeah, he goes, let's go, Brandon, every time I see the man. Uh, I can't escape it. I mean, I feel like... You have one of the hats. I feel like it's dying out, like, a little bit. Don't you? I don't know. That's what I thought. It's been... I've heard it less. And I I definitely think that the moment has passed for me to profit from it personally, for me to do a, a, a merch flip. Yeah. This is one of those problems that feels exclusively white to me. Like... (laughs) <laughs> like, it's never come up in my life once. I have a friend named Brandon, and I ain't even know what the fuck was going on. He had to tell me last week. I was like, oh, shit. Niggas is, I can't tell you to come on anymore? <laughs> <laughs> That's bad news to me, because I cannot leave the barber shop without hearing Let's Go Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's the kind of heat you need. Yeah, you know what they're know. talking. You know what they're saying. Let's go, Brandon, in the barber shop. You know it's real. I know. <laughs> um, but uh, b- back to the the Lauren Boebert gentleman. Um, I have to give him credit because I mean he is right. Earth is the only place you can do any of this. Yeah, and absolutely, it's, 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 it's number one to me. We it's don't know that. Place. It's the greatest Excuse place me, to be. sir. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, citation needed on that. <laughs> That's true. I mean, Avatar 2 did just come out. It might be some shit crack cracking across the pond, across the space pond. 
<laughs> um, I like at the end of that video though, like he tries to like kiss the the cameraman, and then there's this like uh, there's the, there's this extremely blonde lady interviewing him who like loses her shit, and then she's like, "Oh, they let this at CPAC, but not Nick Fuentes." <laughs> yeah, he is he is kind of being a caricature of what everybody at CPAC thinks a gay person is. <laughs> like, where he's, he's trying to kiss the cameraman, you know. It's, uh, yeah, he's being, being a little uh, gremlin. And he seemed hammered. I'm shocked they didn't have him holding a little fruity beverage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was, he was on something. I mean, he seemed uh, quite uh, sedated. Quite loose. Yeah. And Brandon, the word is Alux, not gremlin. Please, once again. Oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's real. No, you've got, you're going to have the gremlins coming after you, the elves. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's uh, national. It's it's Women's Month, right? March is Women's History Ow! Month. Oh yeah, yeah, it is. You, <laughs> yeah, it is. I know you guys will be uh, observing, mm. but uh, mm. this is the, this is courtesy of the uh, the Washington Post. Uh, they decided um, to ce- to celebrate this Women's History Month by uh, talking about our Vice President Kamala Harris, but no, not her, her husband. This is courtesy of Jonathan Capehart in the Washington Post. Doug Emhoff is the antidote to toxic masculinity. So uh, for Women's History Month, yes, uh, Doug Emhoff will be the spokesman now. Uh, Jonathan Capehart writes, this Women's, History's month, this Women's History Month, I want to celebrate a man, Doug Emhoff. In American politics, we are not accustomed to seeing men sacrifice their careers for powerful female spouses. At the White House level, we've never seen it before at all. As the husband of Vice President Harris, Emhoff has the title of second gentleman. With that comes a host of duties once performed by female spouses. But as the first man in this role, he is not only shattering perceptions of gender roles, he is also taking a sledgehammer to toxic masculinity. Hell yeah. Well, how, uh, how, what would you guys do if you were the first gentleman, or actually second gentleman of the United States, because it's you know Kamala Harris? I mean, like, is, is he shattering gender stereotypes by just sort of living off Existing? his life? Existing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess so. I mean, there, he's the first one. There's never been a yeah. first, first a off, second gentleman l- before. Lies. I well, they, it's a little, it's bullshit that they don't count when I was married to Janet Reno. I didn't take none of them fucking headlines. I let Janet cook for a long ass time. So yep. kind of, yeah, hey, fuck off with that. Mm-hmm. For once, if I was the second gentleman, I don't know. Yeah, I probably I coach girls AAU basketball and. um yeah, I guess just what I do now, watch Wings reruns yeah. shit, just cool it. <laughs> I'd be massaging Kamala's feet every night after a long day yep. and just, like, treating Talk her right. Me. I just, I don't know. I I haven't seen Doug, like, do any of the things that he's been praised for. I guess, like. What is he being I, praised for, exactly? Like, be, uh, being, being married. Second gentleman. <laughs> I mean, being I, nice. I mean re- really, he's being praised for, like, being called up by the California Democratic Party and being like, like being told like, "Hey, uh, you're marrying Kamala Harris uh, now that you're both 54." Uh, but like, <laughs> none of the things that people say about him, where it's like, "Oh, he's taking on toxic masculinity," or he's like a he's like a model for how well all husbands should be. I'm not really seeing it. I just I'm not seeing enough like performance from Doug. I just like that somebody at the Washington Post was like, we can't do another story about Harriet Tubman, man. We need something hot. <laughs> something fresh. <laughs> yeah, how about this guy? How about this guy who's like a Hollywood <laughs> lawyer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until he, uh, Doug, up, Emma, like you Doug you, Emhoff, you are taking over George Washington Carver's role during Black History's <laughs> Month. <laughs> Oh, Felix, you said you haven't you haven't like seen him demonstrate any of the, his supposed like a uh, uh, good man bona fides, but uh, he's quoted in this article uh, sharing some thoughts on toxic masculinity. Okay. Emhoff uh, has said we've kind of confused what it means to be a man, oh. what it means to be masculine. Mm-hmm. You've got this trope out there that you've got to be tough and angry and lash out to be strong. Mm-hmm. It's just the opposite, he said. Strength is how you show your love for people. Strength is how you are Strength is how you are for people and how you have their back and how you stick up for other people and push back against bullies. Here, here, says, writes Jonathan Capehart. Um, how uh, was he doing? 
How's he he's, pushing back against bullies? Is, is he's he, pushing back against bullies. Is he bullies. backtracking the IP? Well, what's he right. doing? Well, it says, uh, well, the, right after this, it says, M. Hall famously jumped into action in 2019 when someone stormed the stage during an event Harris was doing. Mm. The moment is among many that show why M. Hall has become a popular part of the Biden Harris administration. <laughs> First of all, I don't remember that at all. I'm assuming. I don't I'm remember assuming, that at yeah, all. They I'm have a Secret happened. Service for that. They don't need this fucking 60 year old guy to be a bullet. Uh, absorber yeah. for the vice president i, I mean I, re- I remember getting kicked off stage but that was you know that whole thing was kind of <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, I, I don't even think like m off heads remember that 2019 moment like isn't that just isn't that just being like classically tough like shoving a guy yeah. off stage that's true you should have let like a female Secret Service agent do that, and then applauded while she did. Yeah, uh, report it to a woman and let them beat this fool's ass. Yeah, Come on. yeah. Going on here, it says, uh, you, uh, "You've got someone who is a public servant, not a politician." This is M. Hoff speaking of uh, Kamala. She has spent every minute of every day of her professional life serving the people. That's it. She accomplishes so much to the extent people think I'm good at this role. It's because I get to watch her. She is awesome. Doug likes to watch. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's up there. He's up there in the Senate gallery when she's breaking, is casting a tie breaking vote, just nutting all over the place. <laughs> he, he's in the official um, congressional cuck chair watching as Kamala <laughs> crowns that gavel. I know I, I, I like this article because I, I like how much I mean, like as, as sort of a lazy good for nothing man myself, I sort of like just how much credit Doug Emhoff is getting for just existing. I was just being yeah, like, it's yeah, an inspiration I, I'm, for sure. I, I love my wife. Uh, she's great. I love watching her do her job. No, that's, that's a, crazy. That's one of everybody, the, every, I'm jealous. Yeah, everybody shot day. on Chance the Rapper when he said he loved his wife. Now, mm-hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? Doug's getting all the... I feel like we owe Chance the Rapper an apology. That's what this article <laughs> makes me feel. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, moving on to the reading series for today. The, uh, the New York Times opinion section has come through for us once again. With an article published today that I think will be of uh, extreme interest to everyone on this episode. Headline, would you date a podcast, bro? Their oh, reputations Lord. have caught up with them. Oh, Lord. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Fellas, uh, we've, our num- the, the, the jig is up. Our, our number, our card has been pulled. <laughs> By the New York Times so that we've been. Oh, man. Uh, the gravy train of girls wanting to date us yeah. is coming to a rapid halt. Oh, my God. The reputation was once uh, so golden. <laughs> oh. This is why I'm cutting my dick off to begin with. This is why I say I'm I tried and they wouldn't let me because so many girls wanted to date me. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is by, this is by uh, Gina Sherilus. Uh, writing the New York Times. So let's dive into this. Mm-hmm. To Zane Ro- Robertson, a student at California State University, Northridge, was working one year of an on-again, off-again dating with a co-worker when she came to a realization she would eventually announce to her followers on Twitter. My biggest mistake in life so far was dating a man with a podcast. Well, honey, if that's the biggest what? mistake you've ever made, then you've led a very charmed life. Um, Thanks yeah, for like, yeah un- 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 unless he like killed your family or something. Yeah, or got you doxxed well, or some shit. Yeah, I think he made a mistake dating a uh, some a civilian, some uh, some lady, <laughs> <laughs> some broad, uh, spilling all her uh, dirty laundry on uh, t- on Twitter. Uh, Ms. Roberson, twenty four, began seeing him in December twenty twenty one. He was thirty five at the time and had dreams of being a social media influencer. She recalled, they both worked at an Amazon warehouse near her home in Lancaster, California. The situationship, as she aptly called it, was very embarrassing, but she continued to date him until January of this year. That ad money. That ad money was too good. (laughs) I knew he had a podcast, but I never listened to it, she said. I was like, okay, I like this man. I'm already ignoring his social media presence. I'm just going to forget he has a podcast. Things were fine when they were together so long as Mrs. Roberson didn't think about his extracurriculars until one day he sent her a link to his show, inviting her to listen and share her thoughts. What she heard turned her off. <laughs> okay, that was, uh, that was uh, error number one. Yeah, never listen I mean, yeah. to the podcast. I, that's, that's a rookie You got to tap in. You should listen. <laughs> I mean, I will say that is error number one. Like, 
asking anyone to click on any link that you ever send them in a romantic relationship or not. It's violence. Yeah. yeah. You should yeah, only sure. you should only send a girl like a photo of two animals and say, "Oh, this is us." <laughs> that, yeah. that is yeah that yeah. is evergreen advice brandon yeah, it's actually real as fuck um okay uh continuing uh things were fine when they were together so long as mrs roberson ms roberson didn't think of, oh sorry uh for mrs ms roberson it wasn't just the content of the man's podcast but that he that he had one at all like many other women she associates the form with a certain kind of man one who is endlessly Whoa. fascinated by his own opi- <laughs> one who is endlessly fascinated by his own opinions, loves the sound of his own voice, and isn't the least bit shy about offering unsolicited opinions on masculinity, sexuality, and women. Many women have taken to social media to mock just that kind of programming and the men who make it. Yeah, well, what do their Patreon numbers look like? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think um, all the podcast bros need to take several seats. I would just like a little bit more. I mean, like I want to know what this guy's podcast actually is, though. They, they like they, yeah, there's no, de- the there's no details here about the article. content. Yeah, we're missing key information here. Because like maybe, maybe this guy is just like, oh, he like recaps episodes of The Last of Us or something right. like that. Like I don't know. Like, they're making him sound like he uh, is one who is you know uh, offers unsolicited opinions on masculinity sexuality and women yeah because we and, and if that and, and if that's the case he's honing in on my we act, don't so we like don't know be contacting him yeah like we don't know if his podcast is him like all right we're recapping every episode of arliss or if it's like <laughs> or or if it is him like talking about like the wall or whatever yeah yeah <laughs> It's got to be somewhere in the middle. It's got to be somewhere. I think it's like him building Lego sets <laughs> and then like personifying the little Lego people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds pretty good, actually. That's how I mean, I like high, 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 yeah, yeah, that's kind of high. Just, that's kind of high concept. <laughs> I was just assuming I was assuming some bullshit like like Brandon was saying, like, um, oh, you know, we're doing um, this is the first leftist uh, podcast about friends. <laughs> but um lego's idea sounds pretty fun i think a brian quimby has already uh pioneered that idea but like i know i like the idea of like yeah he's uh it's a podcast for him and his friends recap our list and then in the last five minutes they're like here's the bitch breaking report I teach you how to break a bitch down uh so it says here um on tiktok hashtags like <laughs> <laughs> on TikTok, more pimps hashtag- should have podcasts more pimps should have podcasts i just want to get that before i, we move. I just want to hear the will medicare break a bitch down podcast <laughs> well you know that guy that's like i mean I, I keep seeing clips of him on tiktok and he's like uh this is how you pull a goth bitch uh this is how you have sex with a pair of sisters like he's only just giving, like, oh yeah i know that guy that guy's awesome uh, so it says i mean i'm i'm proving the stereotype right now that this <laughs> that this fucking article is uh lame basting so Sorry for that. Uh, on Tic Tac, hashtags like hashtag men with okay. podcasts gather videos of mostly women using a beard filter to satirize the sorts of things that male podcast hosts say, such as why, why as a man are you born in the month of February? Or that's the problem with women who read. <laughs> I, okay, okay, I'll, 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 okay, okay. First of all, why are you, as a man, born in February? That's like shit that women say. Yeah. yeah. That's like a woman thing. The thing about women reading, I don't know. I mean, like, this is this is a real throwback type of article. This is a real 2014 type of article where they're recapping unfunny shit that they saw on Twitter. But um, I don't know. No, 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 no hatred or animosity towards the author. Got to get those articles out somehow. <laughs> Others have called on them to, quote, put down the mics and get a job. Well, I mean, for most of them, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, absolutely. There are way too many fucking podcasts out there. I, I completely agree. Like, I probably, more than the author of the podcast, uh, of this article or any of the people that agree with it, think that there should be 99% less podcasts. <laughs> How many like progressive pro wrestling podcasts are there? <laughs> Probably 30,000. I something uh, uh that is very fun to talk with you Felix about is a uh, is just the amount of podcasts that you hate that you uh 
are are ve- you keep you you keep yourself abreast of so many podcasts that you you absolutely despise. I do like listening to bad podcasts. It is like kind of one of my hobbies. So I guess I am kind of keeping a few going. <laughs> we got they got to give them a new name. If your show doesn't have ten thousand listeners, that's internet radio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, internet ham radio. <laughs> Uh, well, here, well, I mean, the next, the next, the next paragraph jumps right into it. It says here, with the once booming podcast industry currently on the back foot and it's, host it's reputation, like, once booming. <laughs> Have you seen our numbers lately? <laughs> How about more booming than ever? Suck my oh, yeah. dick, everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm sorry. I, I was being, ni- I was being nice to this lady earlier. <laughs> nah, talk yeah. your shit, dude. Nah, talk talk, talk shit. your shit. Yeah, the Brandon, the Brandon Jamel show. Oh, now it just dropped. Uh, well, and the host's reputation, <laughs> reputations for self-important mansplaining, having long since caught up with them, is the new podcast bro officially a persona non grata in today's l- l- dating landscape? Uh, first of all, uh, well, never on the back foot. Uh, my reputation for being self-important will never catch up with me, and I'll, I'll stand on that right now. But it says Amen. here, in interviews with a handful of men who work or have worked in podcasting, some say they have had come across romantic prospects who view their profession as a potential red flag. And even among those who haven't, some preemptively adjust their presentation of themselves to make a clear distinction. Tyree Rush, a 29-year-old podcast producer in Atlanta, said he makes it a point not to list his profession on his dating app profiles. Instead, he usually says he works in digital media. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I also never say that I work in podcasts. Yeah. But that's just because it's like, I don't want to like say the name of the show. I don't want to explain it. I don't think it's like an interesting thing to talk about with a stranger. My new thing that I tell like Uber drivers and like, you know, whoever is cutting my hair is that um, I'm a uh, rare metals trader. (laughs) Nice. Also very believable. What I love so much about that strategy, Felix, is that like it brooks no possible follow up question. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you know, yeah. like because uh, like you know, like I've 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 had a similar thought about how to how to how to avoid an awkward conversation where I have to say like my job is hosting a show called Chapo Trap House, and I've been like I've been exp- like sort of like experimenting in my mind saying things like uh, I'm a tax accountant, but then someone might ask me about taxes, and then like I'll have to just like duck and roll out of a moving car yeah I, yeah I i like comedian bad answer podcaster bad answer so i just say thank that you i was I, gonna say the same yeah i i like to say that i'm a federal bikini inspector and <laughs> people are like wow that sounds awesome yeah i invented the nespresso <laughs> <laughs> how'd you get the foam on top man like uh just this is a hard finish my hair that dog get out of here yeah <laughs> Uh, Tyree Rush says, I was on a date in Chicago and I said that, uh, and I said that I said that I do digital strategy at first, he recalled in an interview. So she kept pressing and I was like, actually, I produce podcasts. Now, maybe it's because I lied and said I did digital strategy first that she was not into it. But I also just think that when she heard the podcast, it was a cause of concern for her. Mr. Rush added that she followed with, don't tell me you're like doing a Joe Budden podcast or anything like that. Oh, <laughs> Actually, man. I think I'm going to start telling people I'm Joe <laughs> Budden's podcast producer. <laughs> Not bad. Dude. Oh, man. Joe Budden, when Joe Budden like went to Patreon, they like gave him a role on the executive committee. <laughs> they like Joe Budden like got way better treatment from Patreon than we ever did. I don't know what kind of business he does for them. I mean, presumably a lot. That is a pretty successful podcast, but like, I don't know. I, I, I'm I just saying that I would like to see some parody with uh, Joe Budden's treatment and ours from Patreon. <laughs> Wait a minute. The president has a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. President Joe Budden. Yeah, the president. Yeah, the pre- that's the show. Yeah, the president has a podcast, and he has these two. He used to have these two friends named Rory and Maul, and he f- fell out with them. <laughs> and now he just he records the show with no socks on and shit. <laughs> yeah, no, and 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 uh, you know, twenty twenty four, he's gonna he's gonna pump it up. 
Uh, scrutiny of the podcast bro archetype has also appeared in other areas of pop culture. In the Netflix comedy You People, Ezra, a white broker played by Jonah Hill, reveals to his date that his dream job is to do his hip-hop culture podcast full-time, <laughs> which is fir first met with laughter, followed quickly by judgment and concern. Mr. Rush, who has worked for Marvel, iHeartMedia, and the podcast network Wondery, said he understood the wariness given the, the many things women have to be afraid of when it comes to dating men. A podcast is just another thing to worry about. I mean... Is it? Is it really? I mean, I, I resent the idea that like this is. Look, you can express a preference that it's corny or it's like you you adhere to a certain stereotypical type of guy. But I, I mean, I don't think I don't think having a podcast is something to worry about in in the context of the things women have to worry about when it comes to men. In I don't their know. Lives. What if what if the, he's got a true crime podcast? That's about the women he murders. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely concerning. <laughs> that would be bad. Yeah. I would not want to date him. How does he keep yeah. getting away with yeah. this? It's on its third season. <laughs> Man, the number, but have you seen the numbers, dog? The numbers are crazy. By the way, oh, I, I do want to say think... that movie, You People, I don't know if you guys watched it. But no, I haven't seen it. Uh, oh no, I haven't watched our, it. Our yet, friend, man. our friend Sam J plays his like podcast co-host. It's just a, it's a black guy and a white guy. It's a black lady and a white guy. And when we posted about the Brandon Jamel show, there were multiple people that were just like, "Ha ha, wow!" It's like the podcast from you people. And it's like what? <laughs> mm, <laughs> uh, uh, huh? <laughs> there is an episode. There is an episode where Brandon breaks down the De La Soul catalog extensively. <laughs> <laughs> he goes track by track. We do a top 2000 De La Soul tracks up, but that's different. <laughs> well, I don't know about the movie, you people, but I mean, I think the podcast Girlfriends I've Murdered has gotten a bad rap over the years. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in, in the article, it's like a new chivalry or etiquette that we're trying to figure out, he said. Logan Mendoza, 23, is is one of four hosts of Sweet Talks, a video podcast on YouTube. Uh, he no, said they stop. No, don't no, Don't tell me about this. <laughs> oh, Sweet that's Talks. so fucking depressing. Oh, my God. Four person video podcast on YouTube. Oh, God. Don't <laughs> tell me about that. Oh, well, I really don't he, like that. He said they often get direct messages from men who enjoy their content which he described no, as don't. mostly guy talk and debate. He said he didn't consider sweet talks to be like some of the more offensive shows. At the end of the day, you want to entertain the listeners and viewers. So to do that, you're going to have to say some crazy stuff, said Mr. Mendoza, who lives in Orange County, California. Sometimes we'll say stuff, but we don't really fall in line with it. Sometimes we'll disagree on a topic, just to have an argument with each other on the podcast and have different points of view. That sounds like a horrible idea. <laughs> That sounds like a horrible idea. Okay, like pretending actually, to have you know what? I'm, I'm looking at it. Uh, oh, wait a minute. No, that's a different uh, podcast. Never mind. I'm looking <laughs> at it on YouTube here. Uh, one of them, uh, it said, what kind of people would you wipe from the planet if you could? And I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting, but that's not Sweet Talks. Uh, Sweet Talks is things like Lil Nick and Best Friend say how they blew over $40,000 in one night and why Avocado Thotty left XBF after making a million dollars. Should <laughs> girls pay for the first date featuring Santi? How suburb talks success changed Nick Grigetta's dating life. <laughs> well, these are some wow, these are some these are some controversial topics. Wait, Should wait you yourself... snitch if they have a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he says, yeah, sometimes we'll just argue with each other and have different points of view. <laughs> like, should you snitch? You know, like, uh, I, I, you know, personally, I think you should snitch if he has a girlfriend. But sometimes I'll adopt the opposite position just to juice a little uh, dialogue on the program. You know, get some listeners. You have to say some pretty far out things. Um, Raymond Pang, a 31 year old podcast producer and sound designer who works on mostly science shows, said he had never personally experienced romantic rejection because of his profession. In fact, he said, it was often a point of entry into conversation. About a month ago, he started seeing someone new. But while he was single, he presented himself as an audio producer. As someone who has also worked in public radio, he felt the audio label encompassed both jobs. I feel like I have to be able to position myself away from the terrible man corner of podcasting, he said in an interview. I mean... 
there are a lot. I mean, look, I mean, there are a lot of shitty man podcasts out there, but there are a lot of shitty girl podcasts out there too. I mean, I just yeah, like, I, tell them. Yeah, are there, <laughs> I mean, can, can we hear from some guys who don't want to uh, date women with podcasts, or uh, would, would that be going too far? Or are guys just are they? Are our standards just sort of aligned differently? Or you know, how about other jobs that like you know maybe women don't want to date? How about pedophiles? <laughs> So or horse jockeys? I yeah. I never met a horse jockey with a, a girlfriend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the the horses they're riding get laid more than those guys. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Pang said he didn't know of many people. Uh, uh, Mr. Pang said he didn't know of many people who work in audio who would call themselves podcasters. Though, given the unappealing idea that anybody can be a podcaster, it could mean that you work at This American Life, or it could mean that you record a podcast with a bunch of your friends to talk about the latest week of football games or something like that. Or worse, like misogynistic stuff, he said. For her part, Ms. Roberson, the Cal State student, said that after her experience, she would never again date a man in podcasts. Absolutely not. I mean, a bit, a, a bit harsh, but you know, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, we, we can. T- I think, I fellas, I think we can take a little bit of criticism in this regard. Mm, I mean, no, I like get her there. Like, yeah, definitely. I, if I was her, I would definitely not want to like date another guy with a podcast. But just in general, I would say this article was. Uh, it didn't hit on the main things that make most people with podcasts like boring to date, which is uh, fundamentally at the end of the day that most podcasts are bad. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's true. So like only date, only date a man with a good podcast. There you go. Well, Brandon and Jamel. Here, oh, there, okay. Here we go. The, uh, the Brandon Jamel show. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to suck us off <laughs> until it was time, but it, now it's time to get the suck. Yeah, yeah you know, it's go. a good show. It, it's called the Brandon Jamel show because that's our names and uh, it's funny and we're friends and it's fine. You know, we record <laughs> we record uh, three hour episodes and then we cut it down because Brandon keeps saying hate speech. But what you hear <laughs> is all high quality all the fun audio. Um. Absolutely no, yeah. Tap in. Just just posted the first episode uh, today. We got uh, Will Sasso this week. Zach Fox next Ooh. week. Um, Ooh, okay. Fun, 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 uh, fun, fun podcast. You know, tap in. <laughs> it's fun for most of the family, not the women. No, this is this is for uncles only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's for the uncles. Yeah, leave your auntie at home for this one, dog. This shit is too raw. I will never again have an uncle with a podcast. I'll just say that. <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, will Sasso, though, that's great. Oh, he's, Sasso, he's, he's the man. Dope, man. Yeah, no, Sasso. We didn't even talk. We we didn't even talk. We Steven barely Seagal. talked Mad TV. Yeah, we didn't even talk Steven Seagal. We gotta have him back. We missed a lot of. We didn't talk Southland Tales. Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, I know you guys. Like. There's a there's a movie that needs to. Hey, cool. if you're looking for a guest to talk Southland Tales. <laughs> Hell yeah! Gotcha. Got me in, yeah. fellas. Yeah, I, d- Let's go. I, I went through a manic episode where I was I was watching Southland Tales like every day, and uh, <laughs> I, I got I got way too obsessed with Southland Tales. But it, no, it is. It, is that what happens? Is that what that's called when you keep watching? I did the same thing with Rush Hour Two. I didn't know it was a manic episode. <laughs> <laughs> I just I thought I liked the DVD. <laughs> I mean, I like. I mean, I like the idea of having a, a manic episode and rewatching Southland Tales because it's a movie that sort of uh, is conducive to that kind yeah. of. Uh, it's a movie that's like know, kind of breakdown in your. It's kind of too ambitious for its own good sometimes. Um, but uh, having a manic episode to Rush Hour Two, man, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's an achievement, bro. I, matter of fact, not even Rush Hour. It got to the point where I was just listening to the DVD menu music. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, well, speaking of Jackie Chan, uh, we'll, we'll briefly drop. I, I watched uh, Police Story Three, uh, aka Super Cop, this weekend. Yeah. And, okay, I realized that like I had seen the American cut of that movie released by Dimension Films in the '90s, just called Super Cop. And I watched the uh, the, the Chinese version on Criterion this week, and, and there's a scene in the, there's a scene in the original Chinese version where Jackie and Michelle Yeoh visit a Chinese dog market and are entreated to uh, sample some of the delicacies. And in the entire scene, you can hear dogs squealing in the background. So, if you're if you're looking to have a psychotic break uh, to a, a scene in a Jackie Chan movie, that's a pretty good one. 
<laughs> nice. I'm going to mark that down. All right. Brandon Wardell, Jamel Johnson, the Brandon and Jamel show. Uh, links links for the first episode out today will be in the show description. But, gentlemen, uh, thank you for yes, joining our thank podcast. Thank you so much. Making yourself, thank you for forever in. rendering yourself undateable, unfuckable <laughs> social projects for Let's joining our, our gang of uh, podcast oh, pros. Can I, uh, can I plug a couple of shows while I'm, while I'm here? Let's do it. Well, uh, Seattle and Portland, I'm going to be there in uh, – going to be in seattle later this month at laughs uh this week it, for uh the the 24th and the 25th four shows in seattle uh may 2nd and 3rd i'm going to be in portland at helium uh and i really wanted to plug uh june june 2nd i believe friday june 2nd i'm going to be in washington dc at the 9 30 club and that's going to be a big big show hey. this, this is a this is a big you know homecoming this is a big homecoming show this is a, a venue that you know me and jamel have seen a bunch of shows that I, I saw she and him by myself there once in 2010. I've only gone a- to nine 30 club with friends. <laughs> I've only been with friends. I've never gone alone Yeah, for the record. It's, uh, yeah. I, I did see she and him by myself in 2010 at this venue. Uh, so yeah, please, please come to that. If you live in uh, Washington, DC. Hey, can I plug a couple of things? I just like to plug the Washington Wizards. I think people should be watching them play <laughs> basketball. They're a really good team. They don't get national coverage. I'd also like to plug Potomac Senior High School football. Shout out to my bros, Jaron and Juwan. I love y'all. Good day. Give the Mystics a plug. You you like the you're a big oh, WNBA the Was- guy. And the Washington Mystics start in May. Go Mystics. Go Sticks. Natasha Cloud, come on the pod. Thank you. Oh, Bell House in Brooklyn Everything- in July. Also, I, I think I'm going to be taping that one. Everything is Washington mystical. Gentlemen, 